Hello everyone and welcome back to Trek Yards. He's Commander Kaki. He's Commander Kaki. And today we're talking about the red shirt of the Starfleet fleet. A Miranda class. But not just any Miranda class. What are we looking at today, Samuel? Well, we're actually talking Lower Deck Stuart. The wonderful animated series made by Mike Man and his team. Season 1 was a smash success, both in quality, in canon, in care, and in stories. And we did get a trailer this week uh, for First Contact Day. It was short, but visually sweet and obviously as Trek Yards we saw the ship and even though it's a ship that's been around for like 40 years <laughs> it's still a bit of a new one and of course we have a comparison in a little bit but Stuart we haven't talked about this yet but what do you think seeing it for the first time in the trailer zoom by being fired on I was super happy we've always said we love ships we want to see more ships we got a lot of Cerritos or California class ships in the first season which seemed odd, considering we had never seen them before, but there's so many of them out there. I know they only interact with each other because, you know, the bigger ships don't want to be bothered by them. I understand that. But, um, no, it was good to see something familiar. And, uh, you know, we got little hints at, like, the, you know, the, the freighter, the TOS freighter in Season 1 and little things like that. And the Olympic so class was, and the Bird of Prey. Yeah. There, there's, there's plenty of small things, but Federation-wise, yeah. So for it being still around... Well, Lower Decks is after Nemesis, so, you know, the they didn't all get destroyed in the Dominion War. Yeah, yeah, they didn't all get destroyed in the Dominion War. Let's oh, that way. you so. can never destroy them all. There's too many. It was, it was good to see. I, I was happy. And it definitely speaks to the broadening of the universe, um, which ironically is by showing the old stuff. But the fleet, you know, if a fleet is made, if a fleet's existed for 200 years, it's going to have more of the old and less of the new. And so it would make more sense to have the older ships. And so it was lovely to see. Now, obviously, it is extremely faithful. And we do have a direct comparison. Um, but unlike Discovery and Picard, which um, like to change things and reinvent things, especially Discovery, which did made an active point of updating the visual canon, load X makes a point of actively continuing it, like the TOS designs, etc. Um, that said, this is obviously a post-TNG. -post so we do have the slight visual differences but really they are super minimal the best thing about it honestly is the glowing bizarre collectors and uh chiller grills which are a nice touch and definitely speak to the, the tng-ness of it because that's the the literal least they can do that that's all you technically need to do although i'm surprised there's no visible phaser strips since they don't have the ball turrets Ooh, that's actually interesting yeah that said neither does the cerritos i'm sure this one does have weapons but I mean, it still has the torpedo bar roll bar Although they just have mega phasers, and there are there is a visible red glow in the mega phasers, so potentially Mike actually does actually you know to reference them, because in obviously in the Wrath of Khan we don't see it fire weapons from its phasable turrets, we see it from its mega phaser turrets. So he might be referencing that directly by having those be the primary phasers and the torpedoes be the top, which would be certainly a, a way of doing it. Um, you know, although I still would have liked to have seen it with the full TNG phaser strips. We've never seen that. Uh, even to the point that we're going to see a comparison in a minute, and they still haven't got it. Other than that, I mean, not much changes, uh, not much change here going on, uh, except for the window placement. There's more windows around the, the room of the saucer than on the standard Miranda, if I remember correctly. It's kind of spaced more like the, the refit Connie um, with the original. Um, and this one has a lot more. This is, almost feels more like a... Uh, Star Trek Online variant, yes. especially with the red, red glowing mega phaser. Uh, so if you go to the second bitch, though, it comes in closer. And and this one, it, you know, you see more detail, you appreciate it. It's, it's very well detailed. I mean, they we talk about, people have often said, why are you comparing the Bird of Prey to Star Trek, whatever? They don't have the details. Like, look, there's greeblies inside the mega phasers. They've put details in. Don't be poo-pooing them for that. Now, one thing that does confuse me and annoy me is that there's now a glowing bridge window. Now, it's obviously not a bridge window because that isn't functionally where, what, how that it's is. It's fine. It's fine. It's how it is. That's how it is on the refit enterprise. That's how it is on the, the Reliant. There's always that's the illumination for the registry number. You say that, but it's bigger than it should be. Much bigger, because as we know, the as we know, the ships do link to their current vibe and so the Cerritos does have a light bar there um, because I've you know got the direct comparison here with the USS Majestic now what's great about this is that this is the canon this is the last Miranda seen in canon this is the 3d model of the DS9 Miranda this is exactly the ship that this Lodex one goes into 
So as you can see, it does have the glowing basard, uh, glowing warp grills, no basards. Uh, it does still have phase of all turrets. It doesn't have any glowing bit where the bridge is, um, but as it has everything else. So this is the canon of what was there. Um, but still, Stuart, I mean, <laughs> didn't get anything wrong really, did they? No, actually, I'm super. Wow, it's just small little things. <laughs> The, sh the shape of the torpedo thing is a little bit different. The the stacking of the... There's like three uh, decks on the stacked part. Where there's only two on the new one. Small little things like that that nobody's going to notice because nobody's going to compare these things. Yeah, they do. Which which Mike knows, I'm sure, you know. Um, but, I mean, you know, of all the things that make sense, you you could have a, a you know a new bridge bridge module. I mean, it would be shocking if they didn't at this point. And so I'm absolutely fine. And it is clearly different. There aren't windows there. There's now a big bloody light, which I do not think is a bridge window. That would be absurd. It's just a, like you said, I mean, the way it's framed, this one, it looks like the illumination. It's just, they don't quite, it's just too big. But it's also really animated. The torpedo tubes are still, the, you know, there, there are those few caveats. Um, weirdly, my biggest problem, and this has been a problem for all of Lower Decks, is they've completely abandoned the idea of blinkies. For some reason, every blinky is red here. The front whites, the red, which is completely wrong. I mean, there is no, there is no way about it. Uh, you know, the point of having the blinkies is, and by blinkies, I mean the red and green blinking lights and, and or static lights, is to show navigational formation lights is what they're called. Thank you. Sorry, we call yeah. them blinkies in CG. Um, is to show left and the right. They become completely use useless if they're all red. Completely useless, and I do not think it takes effort to change this artificially created visual image from red to green. Um, so that still boggles my mind. You know, the Cerritos has both red and green in the same area about five times, which, again, completely makes them redundant. And the Titan is all one color, pretty much, except a little bit. So for some reason, they're making an active choice to just get the blinkies wrong on every ship. I don't know why. It's such an easy thing to be right. It feels now deliberate, and it's just a pure mistake. So I don't know why. So my, and if that's if that's my biggest problem, that's a really good thing. But it's a del, it's a thing that's the easiest thing to fix, and they keep making that as a as a mistake, because you can't like either don't have blinkies. That's, in, you know. that's interesting. That's something not a lot of people would know. Cause not, not a lot of people understand that it's a carryover from not only, not only naval vessels but also aircraft, where they have different colors on each side. So if you see it in a fog, or you know, in a, in a weird situation, you know what side of what is facing you, or you know, so. It's interesting you pointed that out because honestly, I don't necessarily think that most people would notice that. Um, but it is something that both you as a CGI artist and me as a model maker are well aware of because we have to make sure that their our models are accurate. So, and it certainly feels like whereas we know most of the team are big Trek fans, it feels like whoever did this last pass, oh, there are blink, there are there are blinking lights. Of course, like they're all red, right? And they don't get any approval. They just it's kind of just crept through time and time again. Because it's just wrong. It's just a mistake. You know, it's very strange. Um, and I don't mind the red basards. Um, I like them. I, I do honestly wish, though, they had cut into them a bit more. Um, and actually made them more big and glowing. They've still got that inner, inner bar, which you can see you know, you know can see more distinctly here. Now you compare them side by side, they're extremely similar. To make them a bit thicker. You know, take out the middle bar, now you've got a big chunky basard. But it, but it keeps it more true to the aesthetic. I mean, I'm not. it's more just what I would do if I was truly upgrading them. And given the fact these are now one step further to the TNG ones, which didn't have basards, it's like, why why do they now need glowing basards and then not have them be more different? You know, I guess they just turn them on. I don't know. Yeah, I really like the glowing basards and the way that they kept them exactly the same as the original with that, with the bar down the middle. I, I personally like that. I see what you, you, you mean about a kind of a newer, upgraded nacelle design. I, I kind of like it that way. Well, I mean, so. all I'd want is just remove that middle bar and have a more visible Nemesis style, like the the the, the fog, the black fog that moves. That's all. That's all it would be for me. But yeah, another success. And I think you know, Mike knows Miranda's a university liked, and I'm sure it's going to blow up. <laughs> Maybe this would be the one that survives. That'll because you know they go they run, they go against the grain on lower decks, so. Maybe this one like gets hit a number of times, turns around, just blows blows apart the ship that's chasing it, and then at the end of the episode, after they survived all that, somebody's going to hit the wrong button or fall back on a panel, and the ship's going to explode. I could see that being a thing. This is lower decks, after all. Come on. No, that's and that's wonderful. Maybe yeah, maybe in fact it'll be the whole joke is that this thing is going to be in a battle and we're waiting for it to be destroyed. And it takes hit after hit, half its source is gone and a cell's gone. It's constantly gone. 
And then, and then just like Khan in Star Trek 2, the captain gets back on the chair and says, How are we doing, Lieutenant? Power at 3%. That's enough. And he, and he destroys the alien ship. He's like, Wow! That guy won't let his Miranda fall. My God, he's bucking the trend to the nth degree. And that would be a, a perfectly wonderful payoff um, to that. And it's going to be something innocuous that destroys the ship at some point later after it survived it all. Got a complete refit, power back up to 100%, and just somebody just do something stupid. Great attention to detail, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the ships that come out in Season 2. Obviously, we are the ship guys. We love that kind of thing. And keep bringing us more of this. Tone down the California class. It's ad. Bring us in some other stuff. I want to see a Galaxy class and, you know, some stuff that should be where, you know, in that universe. So... Um, but yeah, congrats to them. This is awesome. Um, I just hope it is. I hope it does buck the trend of the Mirandas surviving or getting destroyed. I mean, with a that'd be fun, that'd be hilarious. So yeah, and what I and what I obviously like about this is that it, it once again reiterates where we look at Picard and lower uh, Picard and Discovery and say, what have they got right? Because the list is always smaller than what they in a sense of like how they 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 try to change aesthetic because they want to. And lower decks, it's always a refreshing. Like, we still have to get used to the idea that they don't change things, they just respect things. Um, and so it's just like, yeah! You know? Yeah. Although well, they treat the universe and the ships like the Mandalorian does. There's, You see the exact same ship you saw from 1970, whatever, right? So, Except for the logical difference in tech. Except, like, they probably should have phaser strips. But, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe it couldn't handle phaser strips, the design, since it didn't have them in TNG. Which is, you know, DS9 didn't have phaser strips. So instead they said, let's just put the power into the phaser mega phase and make them the primary guns so there is a logical step there you know since phaseable turrets shouldn't necessarily still be on the ships in ds9 but oh well and if you love fun arguments like that about tech and ships definitely this is your place to come to we've done six years now of this we've got hundreds of videos under our belt as far as talking about ships and design and tech and uh, if you if you're into that kind of thing hit that subscribe button don't forget to uh, get notified of any uploads by hitting that bell icon to all and please join us uh, again for different videos we do a lot of lives every week and we always look forward to your comments so put the comments down below there's a nice comment section down there with hopefully some friendly people that you can talk to about this design and others um, and uh, yeah please join the community yeah and it's a great community, and we've seen it grow over the course of all these new shows, which we bring all the details for. I mean, you've seen how much we've done. It's very detailed, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, but if you if you want to support, we do need that support. There's a few great ways. You can do the free stuff, which is liking, subscribing, uh, being part of the conversation in the comments. There's a free, but the, the paid way, uh, or the donation way, is really, really important, because if we can't pay our rent, we can't keep going. If we can't keep going, it stops. Simple as, but what's great is that with such a large audience, even a little bit from a lot of people, does make that gap. So pay Patreon is the monthly, even in two bucks a month makes a difference. Do the PayPal, which goes towards show costs, trackcards.com, really, really good. Or do the super chats. Um, we love that it's a direct interaction way. Um, you know, the Patreon's kind of a silent investor, and super chats are like the uh, hey, hey guys, talk about this. And we're like, oh my god, thank you. Okay, we'll talk about it because we love you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So if you're on board for all that and want to help mm -hmm. out, please consider doing so. And until next time, guys, where we don't, we'll probably have a ship to talk, or something. We're really talking about Star Trek. So until then, he's Commander Cocky. He's Captain Fogg. We'll see you then. Bye, guys.